بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما روى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Going back to our original topic as we were discussing different avenues of looking into the greatness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and as I mentioned at that time that there is no limit to it it's only to refresh our iman to strengthen our iman to have better knowledge about our Aqeedah about our belief, about our Iman in Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we can just touch bases on some of these avenues. And one of the very, very amazing things that we find in the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we can say it speaks for itself. No one has to say anything about it. All you have to do is if you put yourself in that time period of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you sit at the back corner of the masjid and just watch what is happening, which of course we have authentic ahadith, book of Sirah, in undeniable way established facts that we see Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam through those ahadith and. If a person, any person, would just come from any of the academic way of proving something, there is no rule for him and reason for that person to be able to disprove or disagree with this or not to believe in these things. And that is when we said, of course, every hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I'm talking about authentic hadith, are proven in that way. But now this avenue that we are talking about is, as I said, it's undeniable, something that no one can refute it. All you have to do is just sit and look at what is happening there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let's start from the early stages of Makkah Mukarramah. And we have the leaders, especially the leaders of that community that are opposing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is very normal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again reminds us of this fact with every prophet al-mala al-mala the leaders that were there before the this prophet will start preaching the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they see their seats are shaking up that if this man if this man will become successful we are going to lose our seats so in order to make sure that we keep our seats, our positions, we have to oppose this man. Regardless of his, what he's saying is true, false, that's none of their concern. Their main concern is we can let him to succeed in his mission. Otherwise, we are going to lose our position. And of course, just think about all of those nations of the past. Qawm Thamud, Qawm Ad, and the people of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, Fir'aun. How long did it take for Fir'aun to establish that position where he could claim to be God? It doesn't come overnight. He had worked very hard in getting that position. Now Musa salam comes and as soon as Fir'aun looks at the message of Musa salam being so powerful and so convincing, his seat is shaking up. So, he has to disprove Musa and keep people away from Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. 
So same thing happened with all the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. Even after coming to Medina Munawwara, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the main challenge he was facing was the same thing. The leaders of different communities, they are trying to stop their people from listening to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, from believing in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, so much so that now when Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, he noticed that all of my people have accepted Islam. The only way for me to preserve my position somehow within my community is to believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he went and he took his shahada. But even after taking the shahada and he's seen praying behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the saf, when they have a special meeting, he's sitting there giving his opinion. But every time he leaves the gathering, he would have something to say against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and against the Sahaba. Why? He's trying to get his position back. Trying to save his position and his seat, which of course he couldn't do till the end. Anyway, so this is mala. This is what the word mala is telling us in Quran al Karim. Leaders, leaders, all of those leaders of the community who had established their position for some time and now they are afraid of losing it because of this Prophet of Allah. Generally, the mala we find in Quran did not believe in those prophets. General public did believe, but the mala did not believe. There may be one or two out of them. But the situation with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we find totally different. The mala from Quraysh, other than the ones that lost their lives in the earlier stages, later on they all accepted Islam. This is an amazing fact of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's part of the seerah and his life that, as I said, you just sit back and see if Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting, who's sitting next to him now? Who's sitting with him? Who's sitting right around him? Even some of the old Sahaba, they, when they narrate these ahadith, they say, you know, we used to look at them so surprisingly. Look at this man. And they, because they would remember the past. They would remember what this person was doing in the past. And today he's sitting, tears are falling of his eyes. He's sitting by the feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Sahaba told us, you know, we are looking at this man and we are so surprised that look at the change. Look at the change. This was a special, special gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We can say it was that amazing personality. Magnet is not a good example, but that is the best thing that we may have to understand that example because the way magnet would pull the small particles of metal you see, everything was being pulled towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So much so, that people who really, really hated him, and they themselves thought, there is no way ever, I can ever like this man. Or, not only I can ever like him, there is no way ever I cannot hate this man. And then they themselves would admit that, now there is no one I love in my life more than you, Ya Rasulullah. Amazing. The history is full of it. The books of Sirah are full of those examples of who out of those worst enemies who thought they will never, never accept Islam and people who saw what they were doing thought these people will never ever accept Islam. Some quick examples when someone heard Umar radiallahu anhu accepted Islam. So one of the ladies, when she got the message that Umar went to Prophet sallallahu and accepted Islam, she said, I don't think that's ever possible. لا يسلم ابن الخطاب حتى يسلم حمار الخطاب. This is what she said. She said, the son of Al-Khattab will never accept Islam until the donkey of Al-Khattab will accept Islam. The donkey will accept it before him, but he will not accept it. This, when they saw the animosity of Umar radiallahu anhu, that is impossible. This man is not going to accept it. And he accepted Islam and not only accepted Islam, look at his position, subhanAllah. The person who was leading all the forces against Islam, Abu Sufyan, 
when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was entering Makkah Mukarramah, and he took his shahada, he went back to Makkah, and he started calling that, "O oh people, we need to surrender." Inna Muhammad al Aqbala bi qawmin la qibala lakum bi. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now he came with an army that you can never confront. There is no way. So, man dakhal dar Abi Sufyan fa huwa amin. Whoever will enter my home will be safe. And he quickly rushed towards his home, and his wife, who was that? Him. We remember the battle of Ahad. She is the one who hired Wahshi. Again, we have to say رضي الله عنه for him, and for him we have to say رضي الله عنه, and for Abu Sufyan we have to say رضي الله عنه. Subhanallah. So she hired. Uh, Wahshi to kill Hamza radiallahu anhu. And then she showed her animosity in such a way that I don't think a person, normal person can do what she did. Now, when she heard that announcement from her husband and then Abu Sufyan went into the house, the books of the Sira says, she grabbed him with his beard and started pulling him and started making the announcement that don't don't bother and don't believe what this old man is telling you he is out of his mind and abu sufyan continues calling people save your life because he's the leader he has to do something to make sure that he does whatever he can that everyone is safe people save your life so people said your house is not enough So he said, "Man dakhal al masjid fa huwa amin. Whoever will enter the masjid is safe. Wa man dakhal darahu fa huwa amin. Whoever will enter his home is safe." Now, Sahaba entered, and they are doing the tawaf of the Kaaba, and they are all calling "Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharik lak labbaik. Inna al hamd wa al naamat lak wa al mulk la sharik lak." She heard all of this labbaik. She said, "Interesting. Let me see what's happening here. It sounds beautiful. It sounds beautiful. Let me go out and check it out." She went out just to have a quick peek at what Sahaba are doing by the Kaaba. And the, whatever she she saw, she narrates that in detail. But the summary of that is what she says. The statement she made after seeing, she says. I don't think I have ever seen Allah being worshipped before this day. I have never seen Allah being worshipped before this day. Today, I have to admit that I can see Allah is being worshipped. And right away, she takes something like a hammer, whatever she had in her house, and she went to the idol that was in the house and broke it into pieces. Then she went to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and took her shahada. And it's a long story of how she took her shahada also. She didn't take it very easy and simple way. She asked a lot of questions. She made a lot of comments. But after all of that, you know, one of the comments she made: Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the Sahabiyat who had just accepted Islam and is taking the bayah from them, and He's saying that you will not kill your children. She says, but you killed our children. He's making comments, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is just ignoring her. You know, just imagine the leader in that position, who has just taken over, and he will ignore her totally, as if he never even heard anything. And he continues saying the words, and other Sahabiyat are saying it. And at the end, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "Yes, I know your hand." Because the way she was dressed, she tried to dress in a way that he will not recognize her. Recognize her. She said, "She said, yes, I'm him. And now, Ya Rasulullah, I can tell you this much: there was no house, no family in the world that I would wish for it to be more humiliated than your family and yourself. And now, at this moment, she just took her shahada. At this moment, there is no one I wish to be honored in the world." More than you and your family, Ya Rasulullah. 
change. Look at the change. It's not easy. It's easy to see these things, to read them, but to bring that change in those people's life. And then, their whole family accepts Islam. Abu Sufyan himself says, after I accepted Islam, and then I'm sitting by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa near the Kaaba. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was talking to us. And again, the waswasa started coming to me. To me. And this happens to any person. Any person can have the whispers of shayateen. We know what happens when we are in salah. We know shayateen are chained and still we are what we are thinking about. So it's not from him, it's from ourselves. And when he's out, it's even worse. So Abu Sufyan says, I was sitting there and all of a sudden this thought started coming to my mind. Why did I even surrender? Why did I accept Islam? I have those groups of people start thinking about thinking about some strong clans around Arabia, around Mecca. I can go and talk to those people. And we will come back and attack these people. I don't see any reason why we can't get them out of here. He says, Fama ayqadani, the thing that woke me up, illa yadu Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala sadri, the thing that woke me up from that thought, like he's lost in that thought. Like he's dreaming while he's sitting there. And he says, the thing that woke me up was Prophet Sallallahu hand hitting my chest. Saying, إِذَنْ يُخْزِيكَ اللَّهِ In that case, Allah will humiliate you. He said, as soon as I heard that, no one, everyone else looking around, he says, what happened? And he says, at that time, the Iman got strong in my heart and I really believe he has to be a prophet of Allah. That Allah is informing him of what I'm thinking about right now. Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says, during Hajjatul Wada, I saw Suhail ibn Amr. Do we remember who Suhail ibn Amr? Suhail ibn Amr is the person that Umar radiallahu anhu one day said, if someday I get hold of this man, I'm going to pull his teeth out. Because he was a very powerful speaker. And he was using that ability totally against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the person who was representing Quraysh in writing the treaty of Hudaybiyyah. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bismillah rahman rahim he said, we don't know Rahman rahim Raise this and write Bismik Allahumma the way we used to write in the early days, in, the, in our days. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam writes, this is between Muhammadur Rasulullah. He says, we don't believe Rasulullah. Take, erase that Rasulullah and write your father's name. This is the person. Very, very strict the way he dealt with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't know if we remember the story of Abu Jandal who came as the uh, agreement was being made. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam begged Suhail ibn Amr, please let him come. We haven't signed. We haven't signed the agreement yet. So he has the right to come. He said, I won't sign the agreement then. Okay. I beg you for my sake. Just let him be here. He said, no. So strict the way he was dealing with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he continued giving his talks against Islam and against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And finally, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala opened his heart for Islam. So anyway, Abu Bakr As-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says, on the day of Hajjatul Wada in Mina, I was looking at Suhail ibn Amr and I was just shocked. I was shocked the way Allah changed his heart. That I remember the day of Sulh al Hadaybiyah and how he was treating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And today he says, I saw him when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was giving the khutbah, he was sitting and crying. He was sitting and crying and he wanted to sit close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 124,000 people there. Where are you going to find a spot very near Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa People are pushing each other in the front rows. So he found his spot under the head of the camel of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 
Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, I was looking at him, he's sitting under the, uh, uh, the head of the camel, and the camel is uh, uh, chewing the food, and the saliva is dripping, and it's all dripping on the back of Suhail ibn Amr, and he's sitting there with his head down. Not even caring what's, what's happening to him, and what's getting on his back. He's just sitting there. I have the space and he doesn't want to leave that space. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called someone to shave his head. He said, Suhail ibn Amr stood over there. Any hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would fall on the ground. Suhail will pick it up right away and will apply it on his eyes as a respect for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr says, I was thinking about what he was doing that day and look at this, what he's doing today. This is an amazing, as I said, it's something what, if we read the seerah from just this point of view and look at all of those people that came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Safwan, Ibn Umayyah, uh, including the Khulafa al-Rashidin, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali Ridwanullah and their position in their people, Rukana, who was considered to the strongest wrestler in Arabia. This is an authentic hadith. Unfortunately, some people started spreading uh, in some places that this is not proven. But Rukana's hadith is also authentic hadith, where he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa if you wrestle me down, I will believe in you. And I will give you 100 goats. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, okay, ready. And within no time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa laid him down flat on his back. So he says, let me go one more time. I'll give you another hundred goats. Prophet sallallahu said, okay, let him go. Second time, again he puts him down. Okay, one more time. And he wrestled him down the third time. Rukana says, I swear, until this day, no one was able to lay me like this on the ground before in my life. You are the only person who did it. And you are not doing it because of your muscles and your power. You are doing it because Allah is helping you. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And now, see, he just accepted Islam. So first thing he knows that Prophet Wasallam is truthful, is honest. So okay, I have to fulfill my promise. 300 goats. He says, Ya Rasulullah, yeah, I have those goats for you. He said, no, that's all for you now. Do whatever you want to do with it. I just wanted to show you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent me as a messenger of Allah. So if we look, as I said, look at that part of the seerah. Just sit back and look at what is happening in the gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa When these big leaders are coming. When Amr bin al-As comes. When Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu comes. All of them, one after another. And they all are submitting themselves to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amr bin, uh, Amr bin al-As, someone asked him, you are such an intelligent man. Very, uh, really, you, uh, we need to read up the biography of the Sahaba. And if you want to just open your mind, just for making your mind even sharper, read the history of Amr bin al-As radiallahu anhu. Really, if you read his biography, just by reading about him, you become, inshallah, your mind will open up extremely intelligent person. He used to look at a person walking and say, this is what this person may be thinking about right now. Someone is walking towards him, he will tell him, you know, he's coming, I think this is what he's going to discuss with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just gave him that amazing, amazing understanding. Someone asked him, with all, with such a great understanding, hikmah, wisdom that Allah has given you, how come your Islam was delayed for so long. He gave a beautiful response. He said, initially, he said, main thing, of course, Hidayah is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives it whenever he wants. But the main reason that came that was stopping me and delayed me from accepting Islam was that initially we had our elders, mainly he was referring to his father, his uncles. He said, we had our elders and we used to follow them. When they moved out and we became the elders of our community, 
So we started thinking about it. And when we thought about it, we realized he has to be a prophet of Allah. This is how people are admitting to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that strong iman and appreciate that the, Allah, uh, the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power of, uh, of deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqi, Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa alhamdulillahi.